All right. So, here we are at the big event, and Pinocchio's off to be a celebrity. And uh, the cricket is watching. And uh, Pinocchio basically... Well, he's got some natural talent, because he's, he's a puppet, and he doesn't have strings. And he goes on stage and, with strings, and then he drops his strings, and the whole crowd is amazed. And the crowd should be amazed when that happens, right? You can imagine when a kid goes to school, um, and shows some independence, that that's actually going to... People are going to notice that. His, his peers are going to notice that, the teachers are going to notice that. Maybe it's too much independence, even. Right? But it's still a... it is a remarkable thing, too. Like, it, it's so interesting, you know. You can see marked signs of independence in children, well, right from the time they're born, basically. Because what's one of the things that's really funny about infants is that you know, when they're crying, you always think, oh, the baby's... Well, you're crying, it's the baby's sad. It's like, no. <laughs> a lot of the time, that baby is angry. And the way that we know that is because you could do facial expression coding on infants, just like on, on adults, and you can tell what emotion they're expressing. And very frequently, like, when the kid starts to recognize his mom, explicitly, because he or she knows the smell right away, pretty much, in the sound of the voice, but visually, um, if someone who comes in and it isn't who the baby wants, so generally it isn't mom, the baby will start to cry. But it's not because the baby's sad, generally, it's because it's angry that mom didn't show up. And that's an early sign of will. It's like this kid has, this kid wants things, like, and it's perfectly willing to tell you about that. And of course, a two year old who's having a temper tantrum is in some sense doing the same thing. It's poorly integrated will and independence, obviously, but it certainly runs contrary to what you want. You don't want your two-year-old having a temper tantrum in the middle of the toy store. It's extraordinarily embarrassing for you and, well, for you, but it's also embarrassing for the two-year-old. This is one of the th reasons I think that that sort of thing should be carefully socialized rapidly, because it's actually humiliating for the kid, because other people don't like that, and they're very judgmental about Like, they won't say anything, usually, but sometimes they will. But they're not happy about the fact that that's happening, and they will judge the child negatively. And so you don't want your child to be behaving in a way in public that makes other people think badly of them. It's, it's, really, it's really not good. And so you, you, part of your job as a parent is to not expose your child to that sort of experience, especially not repeatedly. It's really hard on them. Or they get narcissistic, which is also really hard on them. It's just, it takes a lot longer to manifest itself. So anyways, he's off on stage and Stromboli introduces him and talks about how wonderful this is going to be and Pinocchio comes out on stage with his strings on and drops them and then he falls down the steps and put his nose in the hole, makes a fool out of himself. And that's when Stromboli, the first time Stromboli shows his true character because he just really yells and screams at him. And he has his back to the audience Stromboli, while he's doing this, so he's not noticing how the audience is reacting. Typical tyrannical parent, right, who's not noticing that society is reacting a different way than, than him, and he's not happy about it. And Pinocchio, of course, is dazed and feels like a fool, and he is a fool, so that's appropriate. But then Stromboli hears the crowd laughing, and as soon as he turns around, he's like all smiles again. And so that's the first time you get insight into what sort of puppet master he is. He's there to please the crowd, and that's all. And he's there to look good in public, but fundamentally he's a tyrant. And so, and I guess that's the problem, the problem with false celebrity, is that the negative spirit of the crowd becomes your master, right? Because to be a celebrity, you have to be a crowd pleaser. And if you're pleasing the kind of crowd who likes a celebrity like you, which is... And there's not much reason for that then it's not exactly like you're appealing to the proper side of the crowd and you've become its puppet one way or another and maybe it's rewarding you with wealth, perhaps and with attention, but fundamentally it's not, it's not something I would recommend if you want to stay reasonably psychologically healthy for any reasonable amount of time you're going to sell yourself out and I don't mean that in any casual way, you know alright, so anyways Stromboli changes from the tyrant to the good father, and half a second he gives Pinocchio a pat on the head, despite the fact that he's made a mistake, looks all kind, and the show continues. Now, the cricket is not very happy about this. He's sitting in the stage watching. He's very uh, angry, 
and let's say disgusted by what's happening partly because Pinocchio is making a fool of himself now that's an interesting thing, you know uh, human beings blush in fact, if I remember correctly the name Adam you know, like Adam and Eve is related to the capacity to blush now, that, that comes from something I read a long time ago and that might be wrong but Adam does manifest shame in the sight of God so there, there is a relationship there but anyways um, people do make fools of themselves for, for public display and you can tell you've done that in some sense not always, if you blush because you've either said something you shouldn't have and you know, you realize that which is more like you've, you've tried to be funny and gone a little bit too far and sometimes that can be really funny or you've said something that you know to be false manipulative, deceitful, beneath you um, any of those things, and you'll have an automatic response to it you'll be ashamed and blush And one theory about that is that you can trust people who blush and so, because you know that their conscience will betray them and so that even if they are lying, they tell you and so, it's an interesting theory, you know because blush is definitely, like it's a facial display, you know it's right out there where people can see it so, you know, maybe that's true, maybe it isn't but it's kind of an interesting idea anyways, the cricket is not happy with what's going on he's not happy about Stromboli and he's not happy about the willingness of Pinocchio to make a fool of himself to support this false celebrity and so, I actually think that's why the celebrity types like that often get narcissistic and arrogant, you know, it's because they, they aren't paying attention they're not paying attention really to what's happening inside of them, they drown it out because the, 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 the glory and the money and all that is so attractive and enticing they don't notice, they refuse to notice what price they're paying for it and they magnify up their grandiosity and their arrogance to keep that stuff all under control and then of course they get surrounded by sycophants, which is a really bad thing, right? they, they get surrounded by people who will tell them exactly what they want to hear and that's really bad, if, if what you want to hear from other people is not good for you to surround yourself with people who won't offer you genuine criticism or even genuine reward, it's the same thing like, you want from me that I differentially reward and punish you in approximately the way that the good part of the crowd will that's what you want from all your friends because then your interactions with them can generalize out to the broader community in a productive way and so a good friend you know, I mean, your friends tend to be on the supportive side, and perhaps that's appropriate assuming there's reciprocity, but a good friend will also tell you when, one way or another, when your behavior is starting to tilt in a direction that's going to make you unpopular with them, and likely unpopular with other people and of course, that's what a parent is supposed to, that's the prime job of a parent, in my estimation it's like, don't do that, other people will hurt you if you do that by exclusion, by threat by failure to offer you an opportunity bad things will happen to you, so you can't do that and then you're a representative of the social situation, which is exactly what you should be not a friend so... or at least not precisely a friend, that doesn't make you an enemy, it makes you better than a friend